So this guy is better than seduces. And better than Greek philosophers. They doubt. Deep in their heart, well, what if there is a resurrection? But I don't want to believe. Is that really true? First of all, they don't know how to lean on the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, and also, bottom of their hearts, I don't want to believe. So that's the main thing. Belief starts from your bottom of your heart. Whether I really want to believe or disbelieve. I don't want to believe it. Because why? Whoever is with you, they are going to influence you. Your thoughts and attitude and behaves. That's why Paul says, Hey, let us feast and drink for tomorrow we die. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. So with this verse, we understand what was going on. So many people, majority of the congregation, even in the church, say, Hey, let's eat and drink. For tomorrow we die. What kind of attitude is that? Have you ever met this kind of people? At work or on campus or... Even in the church. How about our church? Who has this kind of attitude? Who cares about tomorrow? We just we have enough worry for today. So don't think about it tomorrow. Just let's eat and drink. And for tomorrow, we're going to live again. We don't want to die, right? That's the people out there in the world. Once we were there too, because we didn't know about Jesus Christ. We never heard about Jesus Christ. But now somehow, by whom or by, through the book, the Bible, or through people, we've heard the gospel. That's why the Holy Spirit through all of us here, brought all of us here into church to be the body of Jesus Christ. So this is a very important concept. If there is no resurrection, you always have doubt in your heart. What if this is not really true? What if Jesus won't come back? In my time. See, there is a doubt too. We know He's not going to come back in my time or your time. For sure. <laughs> That's my hope. <laughs> right? I don't want Him to come back earlier. <laughs> but there is always doubt in your heart. What if? So in other words, when you and I are believe, believers, there is no what if, okay? Don't ever think about what if. There is no such a condition in our lives. What if? What if, what if? No. <laughs> and why? Always we ask how and what. God, what do you want from me? And you find out, God wants from you this and such and this, then how do I do that? Show me the way. But we always ask, why God? Why is this happening to me? Why me? 
<laughs> right? Why only me? When I look around, everyone has peace, but why me? And what if? We always ask. So that is a doubt. That's what had been going on in this church. So the more you hang around with bad crowds, first of all, doubt comes. When you come to church, there is a resurrection. But out of church and with them, no resurrection. In and out, in and out. In and out burger. <laughs> And then let's come in, let's come in, more out, out, <laughs> and you end up have what? Having unbelief. Okay, no resurrection. I don't have to go to church. Just let's eat and drink. For tomorrow, I'm not going to die. I live. So that kind of philosophy was going on in this city. So think about the Greeks' thinking. That influenced this Western culture. So everything has to be in logic. One plus one. That's why you guys, when you get out of the school, you write an essay, right? Exit exam. Introduction, point, main point one, two, three. Then you just flip over the introduction and put it in the conclusion. Okay, you pass. But Bible never wrote in logic. That's why it's hard to understand. It jumps around. It doesn't make any sense at all. That's why we give up. Why? Because you're so used to, to follow what? Logical thinking and thoughts. That's what the universe is teaching people. So sometimes, if you're students, you need to protest. Hey, professor, you're not doing the right things. So, <laughs> you stay at school. Huh? <laughs> so if there is no resurrection, doubt comes first, and then doubt becomes unbelief. So you are just, turn your back away from God. That's why Paul is saying, hey, why are you saying that there will be no resurrection of the dead? Then I don't have to argue with you if there is no resurrection of the dead. But Jesus has risen from the dead. God raised him from the dead. After the third day of his death. That's why, go down to verse 20, or verse 19. If our hope in Christ is only for, the, for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, notice verse 20. Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. And then later on, he explained about the resurrection body. Adam came into this world as a physical body, but Christ came into as a second body, but it's not physical, but the spirit. So, if we don't die, we can be resurrected. In other words, he's logically trying to explain that to people in Corinth, because many Greeks. So we need to understand the cultural background. You know, even we, we speak the same language, but we have a two different kinds. Right? One think like a Greek, very logical. And another type is what? Like a Jews. They don't think as Greek. They just 